what I can also do is uh, so each will have uh, to uh, each uh, entity will have two nodes properties and navigation properties you can look at the properties uh, by double clicking it or expanding it uh, you can see that each of the uh, properties that we have selected also has a associated EDM or entity data model code type uh, there are multiple EDM uh, types uh, which can be selected from uh, when we create the entity uh, type uh, based on uh, the DDIC structure or RFC um, then the uh, above field is uh, uh, or the above data type is already considered and uh, an, a corresponding uh, um, data type on the EDM side uh, is suggested for example the flight time uh, the associated uh, type uh, on the uh, backend is integer which is of length 10 uh, and what you see here on the EDM it is uh, int 32 and similarly the arrival and departure time uh, which was uh, time uh, uh, which had a domain of time uh, on the on the backend uh, is is uh, is mapped to the edm dot time uh, data type. Uh, now we have uh, created the three uh, entities. Uh, the next thing that we would want to do is to create associations. The first association that we would want to create is between the flight carrier and flight connections. Uh, for one flight carrier, there can be multiple flight connecting flights uh, or, uh, or you know, flight numbers. Uh, uh, which will connect from uh, one one city or one airport to the other. So let me just start by creating the first association. I go to association to create, give a name, um, flight uh, carrier to flight connections. Uh, what would be my principal entity is is basically nothing but my source entity type, and in this case it is flight carrier. My cardinality will be. Uh, uh, 0 to 1 actually 1 uh, and my uh, navigation property uh, which I will uh, uh, is nothing but uh, the name uh, that will be associated with this association uh, uh, is, is connections uh, and as we saw earlier in the URI uh, conventions uh, we can uh, navigate uh, from the uh, source uh, entity to the target entity uh, by using this navigation property the dependent entity or the target entity uh, is is what we have to provide here so in this case it's flight schedules with the cardinality of 1 is to n then we go to uh, the next and here we provide uh, the uh, binding uh, property uh, which means the binding property uh, or the foreign key property uh, which means the uh, care ID on the flight carrier uh, should be same as the care ID on the flight connections to uh, do the navigation we move on to the next uh, and it talks about creation of an associate association set uh, uh, just like we created the entity sets and then we just finish um, so that's it uh, the association has been created and if we go to the uh, navigation property my navigation property also has been created uh, similarly I'll create another association and this time we'll create it from connections to flight schedule uh, for each flight there will be multiple schedules uh, so let's say a flight uh, from A to B uh, will be uh, will have a schedule on uh, the first of the month and third of the month and fifth of the month and so on and so forth so those schedules are stored in the flight schedule entity and uh, here the principal uh, entity is flight connections the target is the flight schedule again uh, the cardinality is 1 1 is to n and uh, we will provide a navigation property on the uh, source as schedule uh, move on to the next and uh, here again we provide the uh, 
dependent property or the foreign key relationship I mistyped it so I will just select it from here uh, when you select you will uh, get to select only from the uh, properties uh, of the target and then the uh, association set has been created uh, that finishes the job for us so the navigation properties for both uh, flight carrier and flight connection has been created uh, the next thing that we would want to do is uh, create the uh, function import or the operation on the uh, uh, entity uh, flight schedule to fetch the uh, available seat information um, right. uh, even before going there uh, let's just uh, look at uh, what is there on the service implementation side uh, so this was all about the the data model um, when we look at the uh, service uh, implementation, you can see for each of the entity um, sets that we have created, there are CRUD operations that you can perform and uh, you need to implement each of them uh, for it to work. Now let's create the uh, function import as well. Uh, so I go to create, uh, go to function import, give a name. Uh, check seat availability is my function name um, what should be my return type uh, the return type needs to be a complex type uh, return cardinality is one uh, it is on the flight schedule entity and it's a get request it's not a post and my return type would be a uh, the structure coming from the web world yeah uh, so uh, what you see here is uh, that it gives me an error saying that uh, the return type uh, doesn't exist which is correct uh, because I have selected for a return type which is complex type but I've never created it so let me first uh, create the uh, complex type and I'll do it again by importing it from a direct structure. Um, okay, sorry, I'll first delete this and then uh, import uh, direct structure for complex type. Provide the name, uh, let's say seat availability and let's uh, instead of putting it as entity type, we provide a, uh, it as a complex type and then uh, Give the structure name. Tick next. Select the fields. Right, do a next. Uh, this time, if you um, realize it didn't ask for the uh, key. So basically, uh, uh, it's a very similar process to create a entity type uh, and a complex uh, type. Uh, the difference between the entity type and complex type. Uh, majorly is that the entity type uh, is meant to represent uh, 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 business entity while a complex type uh, doesn't have uh, existence of its own uh, just like uh, the address uh, complex type we discussed earlier that's it so my complex type has been created and if you see uh, for the complex time there is no complex types there is no uh, navigation available uh, now we do the process again for uh, creating a function import uh, provide the name to it uh, the return type as a complex type cardinality is one uh, it's a get request for flight schedule uh, which is the associated entity type and the complex type uh, we have only one seat availability and that's it so this way uh, my uh, function import is almost ready the only thing that I need to do here is 
add few uh, uh, importing parameters. So you can add uh, care ID. Uh, which is a string you can add a con id which is again a string you need to have a fill like date uh, which is uh, date and time yeah uh, should be fine. And yes, uh, also the class uh, because we want um, we want to uh, ask for a specific uh, class when we are looking at the seeds. We don't want to. Uh, give the seed availability for all the classes in one go. So that should be it. We can also associate it with the data element from the from back end. Yep. So I'm just saving this uh, project for now. Uh, what we uh, see here is uh, there is no runtime uh, artifacts which has been created yet. Uh, let me generate the runtime object uh, which uh, asks me for a um, name suggestion for the model provider class, uh, extension and the base class, uh, generate the uh, uh, data provider class and the uh, extension class and the technical model, model name and the service name. Uh, for now, I'm just clicking on OK. Uh, in the next uh, video, uh, we'll talk about the uh, class, uh, model provider class and the data provider class and uh, the service registration as well. Thank you.